So you're in the market for a brand new laptop and you're asking yourself the question, should you buy an Intel based MacBook Pro 16 inch? And in this video, we're gonna answer that question, or at least we're gonna try to. And the short answer to the question is, you probably shouldn't buy one of these right now. But the long answer is, obviously more complicated than that. Now first up we're going to start off by just saying at the end of the day just buy what works for you right now. So there's always going to be new tech on the horizons and reasons why you shouldn't upgrade your technology. Obviously there's a smart thing to do and that's making sure that you time your buying decision at pretty much the right time where you're going to get the most longevity out of the tech that you buy. But sometimes that's not always available to you. If you need something for your workflow for whatever it is that you need to do and you need it right now then obviously buy what works for you now rather than waiting. But if you're not in a rush to buy a, a new MacBook Pro, we're gonna go over some of the reasons why you might wanna wait and some of the reasons why you might actually just wanna buy one of these right now because waiting around isn't necessarily gonna get you everything that this thing gives you. So first up, let's address the elephant in the room and the main reason that you probably would want to wait. Have you seen anything at all about Apple's move across to their own silicon and especially with the launch of the M1 chips in the MacBook Air, MacBook Pro 13 inch and also the Mac Mini, then you know that at the moment Apple are really killing it when it comes to their processors. Obviously it comes as no surprise that this is probably gonna be one of the next devices in their future lineup that's going to get that apple silicon treatment but we just don't know what that looks like yet and obviously we don't have a release date and apple as always are going to be very tight-lipped with these things but it does stand to reason that we will be seeing an apple silicon upgrade to the map pro 16 inch which will most likely blow the performance out of the water and absolutely decimate anything that we've had in the past so now at this point in the video you're probably sat there going well yeah i absolutely should wait if there's going to be something new on the horizon that's going to destroy the performance of the intel based macbook pro 16 inch then why the hell wouldn't i wait and there are a few reasons the move across to apple silicon does destroy quite a few things and it renders a lot of different things useless so it depends again on your workflow and the type of user that you are and the first one is applications so although apple have done an absolutely killer job of making sure that applications run on apple silicon devices there are going be a few exceptions to the rule. So for all you business users or for anybody who's worked for any medium to large type of business before in the past, knows that certain businesses really get stuck on old legacy applications and legacy software. And moving across to newer devices and newer types of hardware can be really, really difficult. That transition is not necessarily small because those applications are so incredibly out of date and they're getting those software updates that then moving across onto something based on Apple Silicon rather than Intel just isn't gonna be part of the window, which means that you have to change your workflow or you have to set off an application that's being translated and maybe not working particularly great. So that's the first kind of user who would absolutely benefit from sticking with something like an Intel-based MacBook Pro. The next one is for you gamers out there. So anybody who does like a little bit of gaming on the device, and I know this is more of a niche market, but there are gonna be some people who just want the one device that just fits pretty much everything, you'll be able to boot up some of the Intel-based games on this thing. Although there's not a massive amount of them, they do still work, whereas moving across onto an M1-based Mac starts to render some of those useless. The next one, which kind of ties into the gaming aspect, is you can install Windows on this. So if you are somebody who's using applications that run on Windows and also on Mac OS, then the Intel-based Macs are pretty much gonna be the only thing that's gonna do that. Moving across onto the M1 based Macs means that you are losing the ability to boot into Windows. So you don't get boot camp anymore. It's just not something that's currently supported. And whether or not that will change in the future, that's anyone's guess. And even if it does, it's gonna be an ARM based version of Windows. With the Intel based MacBook Pro 16 inch, you can install Windows through boot camp, which means you can install multiple games or other applications or anything Windows based that you've used in the past. So if you are somebody who likes to be able to dual boot into Windows because of work or because of gaming or because of any other reasons, then you're not gonna get that waiting around for the next MacBooks that come out. And the MacBook Pro 16 inch that's currently on the market is gonna be the go-to for that. So yeah, for all of you gamers out there or for anybody who's using Windows, then this MacBook Pro is probably gonna be the one to be looking at. And the next reason you'd probably wanna go for one of these instead is purely because of the accessory support. So with this, you're getting the Thunderbolt port, which means you can use something like an external GPU, which again means that if you're a gamer, you'll be able to plug in an external graphics card and just do more powerful gaming on this, even when booted in Windows, which again is pretty handy. 
If you're using any other intensive applications that require an external graphics card, you have that ability. You can plug in that external graphics card and use it. Again, it gives you a little bit more future proofing in terms of the graphics performance because when new graphics cards come out, you can get an external GPU and plug that into the device and do it that way. The other thing that benefits the MacBook Pro 16 inch at the moment, although this might change, is purely the support for things like external monitors. Although you can use external monitors on the M1 chips, you can only use one at a time, which is a bit of a pain unless you're using something like the Mac Mini. So if you then wanted to plug into multiple monitors and that was part of your workflow, that's not going to be supported. Most likely going to change on future versions of this, so even one of these shipping with a Apple Silicon chip, chances are we're going to see that, but again, we just don't know. However, if you're making your buying decision right now and it's between this and something that's running on the M1 processor, it's absolutely something that should be forming part of your buying decision. So they're just some of the reasons why you'd want to pick up something like the Intel-based MacBook Pro 16-inch at the moment, rather than waiting around to see what comes from Apple Silicon. Obviously, a lot of those are going to be more niche-based things, but if you are a business user and you have legacy applications then that's gonna be really important to your workflow if you are somebody who just has the one device and likes to be able to do a little bit of lightweight gaming when you boot into Windows again this is gonna be the only device that supports that going forward newer versions of it running on Apple Silicon they're just not gonna have that ability to dual boot into another OS and do some gaming on it although you will get some gaming going forward and hopefully more developers get on board with it it's not a guarantee whereas this will give you legacy support for those older applications for Windows based products and also for gaming as well so it's definitely worthwhile bearing in mind. Now to round it all off, even if you don't need the benefits of Apple Silicon and you just really aren't bothered about that and you do need some of the things that we've just spoken about there, it's still worthwhile waiting around to see what comes from Apple in the future purely because once those Apple Silicon MacBook Pro 16 inches land on the market, you can bet that these things are gonna fall through the floor when it comes to the reusable price and things will just get so much cheaper. There'll be so many people probably selling these off and you'll be able to buy them second hand that it does make sense just to hang fire that a little bit longer. Now, again, like I said at the start, we don't know when the MacBook Pro 16 inch is gonna be coming. There are so many shortages when it comes to tech at the moment that it doesn't really make too much sense for Apple to just go crazy on this. There their older devices are selling like mad, so it kind of makes sense for them to stick around for a little bit longer. And it's most likely, according to all the different rumors and everything else, looking like this will be coming towards the end of the year. However, if you are in no urgent need to upgrade right away, it's definitely worthwhile just hanging fire because you never know what magic might happen and we might see those Windows and gaming applications coming across to Apple Silicon, or like I said, the price of used hardware will absolutely fall through the floor. So it's worthwhile waiting to make yourself a bit of a saving. So as always, really hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, hit that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button so you can come along for some more awesome content in the future. Let us know in the comments, are you in the market at the moment for a new MacBook Pro 16 inch? Are you waiting for the Apple Silicon versions to come out? Or are you just gonna bite the bullet now and buy the 16 inch Intel version? I've got it at the moment, it still runs really well, runs very hot, of course it does, and battery life isn't great. But performance on this thing is still stellar to this day and it does absolutely everything I need it to. Lightweight gaming, lots of video editing, and just work on the go with an awesome screen. So it's still a crazy good device and definitely one that I would recommend. However, your use case may vary and certainly worthwhile hanging on just a little bit longer if you don't absolutely need it today. In the meantime, stay safe and we'll see you soon for some more awesome content. Bye.